Although still photographs can be both beautiful and expressive, they can do no more than suggest the dynamic nature of a scene. Video clips are much better at conveying this information. Unfortunately, they have the annoying habit of starting over with an unpleasant temporal discontinuity, or jump. In this paper, we demonstrate how regular video clips can be turned into infinitely long video textures that play continuously for as long as you like. To create a video texture, we begin by analyzing the video to find similar pairs of frames using an L2 distance metric. We then sequence the video by randomly transitioning between similar looking frames. The red bar shows the frame that is currently being played. Red arcs show possible transitions to other parts of the video. The arcs light up when the transition is taken. Of course, we don't have to analyze the whole image as one unit. Here, we split the original video into two halves, find the best loop for each half separately, and then put them back together. This gives us more variety for a smaller amount of training data. We can also use motion estimation techniques to automatically break the image up into regions that can be independently analyzed and synthesized. Here, five different regions, shown in different colors, were automatically chosen for video texture analysis. In some sequences, there are no smooth transitions available, like in this waterfall video. In this case, we can sometimes obtain a plausible video texture by making frequent transitions and blending several portions of the sequence together. Here we show a video texture of a woman smiling. We use morphing instead of simple blending to reduce visible discontinuities at the transitions. This kind of a video texture would make a good replacement for the still images often found on people's web pages. We can also combine video-based rendering with traditional image-based rendering techniques such as view interpolation. Here, we have extracted a depth map from multiple video cameras and texture mapped the synthetic video texture onto this 3D surface. Such 3D synthetic elements could potentially be used in 3D computer graphics animations. Another thing we can do is to give the user interactive control over the video texture. For example, the user can specify with a slider which portion of the original video clip to use in creating the new animation. In the original video, the runner started at a slow speed and gradually began to run faster and faster. By moving the slider, the user can interactively specify a slow run, shown on the left, a fast run, shown on the right, or variations in between, as shown in the middle. We can use a similar technique to shorten or lengthen the sequence of video without changing the apparent speed. The original 15 second video clip is shown in the middle. The middle part of this video contains a good video texture, which we can shorten or lengthen to produce shorter or extended versions of the video. Sometimes it makes more sense to isolate the object of interest from the background and to track its motion across the screen. We call these objects video sprites. Here, we are synthesizing both the appearance of the fish and its trajectory based on the input video. We can also have the fish swim towards the red dot, which is being interactively controlled with a mouse, to better script its desired motion. Let's composite a final video texture by putting together all of our previous ideas. We start with a static fish tank background, and add the bubbles on the left and right, and two swaying plants. We can then add several instances of our fish video sprites to create an artificial fish tank. We can also have the fish follow a specified path. This type of scripting could be used to create a video-based animation.